Hi, this is the Sunday evening update on Marco and Laura. As always, the thoughts here are just mine, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local National Weather Service office for the best information for your location. We continue to watch our two storms that are threatening land. It is now Hurricane Marco and Tropical Storm Laura, and as normal, we are going to start with Marco. This is the one that's going to be hitting the United States first while Laura is impacting the Greater Antilles and will still take a few days to get to the U.S. If we look at Marco now on visible satellite imagery, it's hard to see the center. It's under here somewhere near the southern edge of the convection. We don't yet have an afternoon recon plane in there, but we had one throughout the morning. And this is now beginning to suffer from wind shear out of the southwest. You can see a large chunk of convection is missing all of it on the northeast side. And it's really a close battle here between Marco's vortex spinning vigorously, generating convection, and trying to remain robust in the face of the southwest flow aloft. And the recon earlier found that it was still continuing to do that. Maybe a slight pressure rise here with the track coming toward the north northwest, but plenty of wind on the east side uh, with winds over hurricane force at about 75 to 80 miles per hour at a maximum earlier this morning when the plane was in there. We'll see if we get new data later this evening. If we look at the water vapor satellite picture, we'll see again this big upper level trough over Texas bringing the southwesterly flow over top of Marco, and this is also occurring underneath the outflow. You can see the outflow expanding toward the west, so it doesn't look at first like it's that sheared, but there's a lot of wind coming underneath that level. Remember, the atmosphere is three-dimensional, and so this is shearing Marco considerably as we go through the night tonight and into the morning. Now this is expected to very quickly move up and approach the Louisiana or Mississippi coastline sometime tomorrow morning, but it's going to be a really close call how long Marco maintains its current structure without succumbing to the shear entirely. And what do I mean by succumbing? I mean having the low level center uh, become decoupled from all this convection and have that uh, all move to the north, leaving a low level center behind on the southwest side. That could potentially happen Happen right as Marco approaches the coast, but it's going to be close. I'm going to show you a potential depiction of how Marco will evolve on the H wharf here. Let me zoom this in a bit for you guys. And this is the current uh, the sea level pressure plot in black, and then the mid level wind. Uh, in and moisture in green and wind barbs here and you'll see that as we go forward with the southwesterly shear the vortex will continually fight to be aligned you'll see dry air and browns get into the center from time to time and you'll see it really start tilting here as it moves north and at this point as it nears the coastline we've got the mid-level center a little bit farther to the north and the actual surface cyclone offset from the convection entirely. And as this nears the coast, it's continually fighting. You see Louisiana show up now on the plot, and again, still tilted, still fighting. Because of the shear, we don't really expect it to get stronger, and it's really a question of, will it weaken on approach to land? And as this comes near the coast on the H wharf, it does manage to maintain a strong tropical storm structure just as it reaches the coastline and then at this point the decoupling happens now you see all the convection get whisked away and it's brown and dry and all the rain gets pushed off to the northeast side and continues moving northward while the now decoupled vortex moves westward over louisiana following the lower level flow and this vortex would be breezy but would not have significant weather with it and the question is when does this happen it will eventually but does it happen after landfall just before or during landfall and this is the current wrinkle in the forecast what you have to assume if you're along the gulf coast from eastern louisiana through alabama is that this will hold together that is the uh, worst case scenario here and the ceiling on this is winds that are about hurricane force 75 miles an hour or so that's the wind you should be prepared for and the storm surge associated with that wind has led to storm surge warnings along the coast and the hurricane warning that is also along the coast here you should heed those because we can't guarantee that uh, this will fall apart it's possible that it does uh, but you have to assume it won't uh, right now it's kind of unclear exactly when that will happen so for now, this is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center showing that track to the north-northwest, and then the bend to the left here is because of that weakening, but exactly where this bend occurs and when that weakening occurs, 
still unsure, but we are assuming that there are going to be the potential for hurricane conditions here in southeastern Louisiana. And do keep in mind that even if we do see some of that weakening due to the shear right before landfall, even if the wind and storm surge threats come down, the rain will continue northward of this path just because the track bends left doesn't mean the rain necessarily will as well, and we'll see rain extend well up into eastern Louisiana, Mississippi, and even Alabama, bringing the potential for flash flooding that you can get with tropical storm rainfall. So do be aware of that. That will occur regardless of how well Marco holds together as it approaches the coastline. All right, so going back out to the larger view, uh, we are going to see uh, Marco move in by Monday morning, tomorrow morning, and behind it will come Laura. And uh, this is continuing to march westward, passed right over Hispaniola last night. And if we look at the close invisible picture, we'll see that the rotation is for once actually very clearly evident on the satellite image and compared to the last several days of its life Laura is better organized and we can see a well-defined circulation right here between Cuba and Haiti and despite coming right over the most uh, the tallest mountains of Hispaniola this is fairly well defined and this is in some sense impressive given that this is an awful location from the storm's perspective to be in uh, because being between Cuba and Haiti means that the primary inflow is getting blocked by the mountains on the Haitian Peninsula right here and the inflow from the northeast is also getting blocked and redirected by the mountains on the eastern Cuba coastline. So this is not a very healthy place for a tropical storm to try to strengthen but it is fairly robust despite that fact and we can see on the radar picture here out of Guantanamo Bay Cuba that rotation right here moving west northwest toward the Cuban coastline and we're not seeing an eye or anything like that but just a well-defined circulation that is now more or less vertically aligned maybe not perfectly uh, but that was the key metric that we were watching for over the last few days is when would the low level and mid-level circulation become aligned they seem to have done that now and so this is a healthier storm than it has been up to this point in its life. This is the recon plane that just got in there and started flying around and they found a pressure of about 1,000, 1,002 millibars and very strong wind to the north of Cuba on the north side. And it is worth noting that for now, this wind maximum is well removed from the center of the storm and there's very loose and light winds near the actual center. This is not terribly surprising given all the terrain from Cuba and Haiti around it, uh, but it is uh, something to keep note of because it is possible that interaction with Haiti and Cuba will keep Laura from intensifying substantially for some time yet and its intensification may be delayed still for another day or two. Now as we look at this radar picture again it's very important exactly what direction Laura is moving. It seems that the direction is just north of due west here and this should cause it to interact with at least a portion of these really tall mountains right in the southeastern end of Cuba. It doesn't seem like it's going to go all the way south of the mountain chain and it will likely move over these at some point. However, it's possible that this will be able to move south of the rest of Cuba. And this is uh, because the storm has been moving a little bit farther south than expected. It is not up here like many models yesterday had it. It's just shifted a little bit south of that. So now we're talking about a potential track that has some initial disruption from these mountains, but then in here, it might get some water time. This is unfortunate news if this happens because it has a chance to become better organized prior to moving through the Gulf of Mexico when it is likely to encounter favorable conditions. And if we look at the GFS model forecast aloft, uh, this is the upper level uh, or, or upper troposphere map for early Tuesday morning showing Marco here starting to drift westward because it decays on the GFS and does that left hook we talked about and then Laura starting to emerge from the vicinity of Cuba and what we're seeing here is the upper level flow aloft is doing this we have a big upper level ridge that's shaped like so and we have our big upper level trough over Texas so this big southwesterly flow here you can see is shearing Marco but Laura is located farther back more more beneath this broad ridge and as we take the storm across the Gulf of Mexico on the GFS it maintains this position underneath this big upper level bubble of ridging and this is an optimal position 
of the ridge for strengthening of Laura. There is a slight wrinkle in the forecast because if Marco does remain or its remnants are sitting offshore while Laura is coming in, this could induce a little bit more of a southeasterly component of the lower level flow while the mid-level component will be out of the east. And if these two flows cross like that, there could be a little bit of mid-level shear that could potentially impact Laura. But as it stands, uh, it should uh, it should not be significant given that Marco is expected to be so weak that the influence is likely to be small. We'll watch for that, but at the moment, conditions seem likely to be quite favorable for Laura during its transit of the Gulf. And the question at that point, be at that point becomes, where will it make landfall along the United States coastline? If we look at the 500 millibar flow here during this time, you'll see that again, this mid-level ridge nosing into the north is what is steering the storm generally west-northwestward. Now, eventually, because this trough is lingering here over Texas, there is an edge to this ridge, which will allow the storm to eventually turn toward the northwest or north. Where exactly this occurs is, of course, key for which location gets the landfall. At this point, this has been shifting a little bit to the left with time because yesterday's forecasts had Laura biased north of Cuba, which meant that it turned north earlier into Louisiana, close to where Marco is forecast to make landfall. But because the track is shifting toward more the south side of Cuba, it may be that it tries to stay uh, west-northwest for longer, and that puts Texas in play and it's very possible that either Texas or Louisiana gets the landfall. We can't tell you which. Right now, the mean forecast, uh, and by mean, I mean the average, uh, the average forecast is near the border of the two states. And of course, again, this does put Houston in play, and it does keep places like Corpus Christi in play and the central coast of Louisiana. So if you're living along the Texas and central, uh, or from the central to central Louisiana Gulf Coast, you should be preparing for a potentially strong hurricane. Right now, the official forecast from the NHC is for a Category 2 in the northwestern Gulf. A lot of how strong it is at landfall will depend on how organized it is here after emerging from its land interaction with Cuba. If the storm is very broad, loose, and disorganized after it emerges in the Gulf of Mexico, it will take some time to intensify and might be, you know, only a cat two hurricane say at landfall but if it's pretty strong coming off of cuba and immediately begins intensifying conditions could allow it to continue doing that for two full days until landfall and we could be talking about a major hurricane that means winds in excess of 115 miles per hour by the time it reaches the u.s gulf coast so this is obviously a potentially major situation coming for the u.s Worth noting, this has also been a major situation for the Greater Antilles, where severe flooding has been occurring and always does when tropical storms move through this region. That's going to be a concern going forward for Cuba. It remains a concern for Haiti and the Dominican Republic as rain continues to fall in these areas of tall mountains. Tropical storm conditions likely throughout the coastlines here. The entirety of Cuba is under a tropical storm warning. We do have tropical storm watches further north into the Florida Keys and Bahamas as well, as again, some that wind we saw on recon near and north of Cuba is quite strong and some of that wind will be moving into these areas and we could see a gusty day with high waves etc throughout that region and then obviously as we get closer to landfall which right now is expected to be on Wednesday or Wednesday night we will see warnings inevitably for the US coastline at some point it is your time to prepare. Obviously, if you're in Louisiana and Mississippi, your time has run out to prepare for Marco as that's coming tomorrow morning. And hopefully you also prepared for the possibility of being impacted by Laura just in case the aftermath of Marco makes it difficult for you to do so. If you're in the upper Texas coast, you still have time uh, but treat this as a serious situation because that's what it could be. Who gets the exact impacts at this point, we still can't tell you, but we know the vicinity that it's headed for, and we know it's going to be strong when it gets there, so do prepare and have a plan accordingly to that forecast. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.